Welcome to Skull Junction. This short video is filmed on location at the Lincoln and District Model Engineering Society's track at North Scarl in Lincolnshire. Let's take a closer look at how the railway is run. Steaming starts early on Sunday mornings, especially on car boot days. As the first engine rolls onto the turntable, we can see it's an LNER 02 locomotive, modelled in 5 inch gauge. The next engine we see is 30089, an Adams B4040 tank loco. Both of these engines are regularly seen at Skull Junction on most running Sundays. We are now going to leave the station for a journey around the field behind 63489. As you can see it's rather a wet day. With Lawrence Tasson at the regulator this is a view that is rarely seen. We catch a quick glimpse of the level crossing with keepers manning the crossing gates. The next part of our journey is taken from the footplate of a 5 inch narrow gauge locomotive known as Meter Maid. This is also an unusual view as only the engine drivers have the privilege of this position. The locomotive is working hard as it's climbing up a 1 in 75 gradient. No sooner have we climbed up the incline we drop down to our first foot crossing. This is where we join 30089. The train is slowing to negotiate the points into the passing loop. The loop was installed to allow two trains to pass on the same stretch of line. As we exit the loop, we begin a gentle climb up to the tunnel. On exiting the tunnel, we join a train, but this time as a passenger. The locomotive at the head of the train is a 5 inch narrow gauge engine, called Sergeant Murphy, with owner David Lewin at the regulator. David is normally found working on the Festiniog Railway in Wales, but always finds time to visit other railways. Going along the strait, the track follows the natural lie of the land, but can still be quite testing for any engine. Round in boot end corner the track has a nice gentle incline. With a good load it makes the locos work hard. As the train draws alongside the tree line we start to drop down the grade towards our second foot crossing. This is where Meter Maid continues our journey. The track has now levelled out and we travel along at a steady pace.
the train slows a little for Swinderby Road exit gate crossing. And we change views again to finish the last part of our journey on the footplate. Boiler pressure needs to be raised, as just beyond the fence the track steepens to a 1 in 60 gradient. So the injector is turned off and another round of coal is put on the fire ready for the climb. A whistle is given to warn anyone a train is coming and not to step out onto the track. As we round the final curve we're back on the level and slowing for a gentle stop at the station. And that brings us to our journey's end, 1,947 feet or 594 metres. But to have all this track it takes a special band of men who turn out every Saturday come rain or shine to get the railway complete. With platforms finished, attention was turned to the shed area. The last engineering brick goes in to finish the groundwork on the turntable and handrails welded on to make it a safer construction. More concrete was poured in to let the society have a nice set of raised steaming bays. And here is the passing loop I spoke of, to let two trains pass on the same stretch of line. Most of the track was laid during the winter months, Clogbank Corner and the long straight down to Swinderby Road Crossing being installed on cold damp mornings. With sunnier weather, the last sections of track were laid to complete the circuit with customary golden bolt. The track finished in July 2003, it was just in time to celebrate the Society's 70th anniversary in September. Railway was officially opened by Councillor Mrs. Barbara Wells, MBE, on Saturday, the 20th of September 2003. The lead engine in the opening procession was a seven and a quarter inch narrow gauge Sweet William loco, owned by Dave Pierce. with long-standing society treasurer Paul Thompson at the controls. Other locomotives in the procession were an unpainted Class 20 built by Brian Ives, 30089 and 63489 complete with authentic smoke effects.
This engine leaving Skull Junction is a seven and a quarter inch gauge 040 tank loco visiting from Chesterfield. Following hot on its heels is the 5 inch Sergeant Murphy with a good open. These next superb shots were taken from the passing loop. Other engines seen here are a 7.25 inch narrow gauge Hunslet and a 7.25 inch LNER tram engine. Here is something rarely seen at Skull Junction. Between all the passenger trains we were able to run demonstration freight trains. This one hauled by a 5 inch gauge pannier tank visiting from Melbourne, Melbourne. The rolling stock used was brought by the Lindsay Model Society. Mixed who as you wagons pay great attention to detail in replicating to scale from full size. This attention to detail is also evident in the way they operate their own railway. Now watching the exit of the tunnel we see the same locos again but with two different types of diesel traction following on behind. This engine is a seven and a quarter inch 040 dock shunter visiting from Chesterfield. And the second loco is a rather rare seven and a quarter inch ransom rapier visiting from Grimsby and Cleethorpe Society. This superb panoramic view really shows the three acre field that we've been able to build the track around. Visiting tank engine from Chesterfield pulls around another trainload of happy passengers.
Here we see David Lewin is taking advantage of the straight track. And then seen dropping down the grade to the foot crossing. The next engine is a seven and a quarter inch Hunslet with owner David Brown at the regulator. This loco pulling three carriages still has plenty of power in reserve. The most impressive freight train during the weekend was hauled by a class 20 loco. The total wagons counted was 47. But the only way we could operate such a long train was to wait till the end of the day. Here we are back on the platform with visiting loco from the Stockholm Farm Miniature Railway. A seven and a quarter inch gauge LNER tram with driver Peter Wood at the controls. These next two locomotives are both visiting from the Chesterfield Society of Model Engineers. The first one we see is a seven and a quarter inch gauge Sweet William locomotive with driver Tom Wood at the regulator. followed by a seven and a quarter inch 040 diesel loco. This next unexpected visitor is a seven and a quarter inch gauge Bridget 
visiting from Bradford Society of Model Engineers. And here we see an LNER Y4, modelled in 5 inch gauge, leaving with a mixed freight. and now a rather small loco but still very impressive this engine is a 5 inch gauge lion locomotive which was experiencing one or two problems with getting water into the boiler the trap being quite a long distance for this loco it takes a rest in the passing loop the full size locomotive was one of a group of four goods engines manufactured by the firm of Todd Kernston and Laird for the first intercity railway, the Liverpool and Manchester. All were named after big animals. Key features of line, both typical of locomotives of the period, are its round top haycock firebox and sandwich frames enclosing the wheels. However, in 1937 the loco started a new career in the movies. After cameo appearances in Victoria the Great and 1951's The Lady with the Lamp, a film biography of Florence Nightingale. In 1953, Liner had a starring role in the Titfield Thunderbolt. This told the story of a group of villagers who defied the closure of their branch line by operating it themselves the 115 year old lion certainly looked the part. Let's take a look around the field. The Lincoln and District Model Engineering Society managed to get fantastic support for the open weekend from exhibitors and trade stands alike. Collingham Fire Brigade were available to appear on the Sunday, which allowed children and parents to see all the equipment a fire engine carries, and was also handy for topping up full-size traction engines with water. Classic Motique of Saxelby were able to bring a splendid motorcycle display with a Yamaha racer and MV Augusta to name but a few. David Tomlinson of the Lincoln and District Model Engineering Society brought along his Austin A35 for display. And with Ian Douglas's one seventh scale Foster tank on manoeuvres, it was rather a fitting exhibit for the bookstore, selling a recently published book all about the Foster's Mark IV tanks that were built in Lincoln. And what's this? Is Skull under attack? No, just a brilliantly planned Battle of Britain flypast.
we turn our attention to visiting tracks and engines and steamrollers. This is a 3 inch scale Wallace and Stevens roller owned by Ivan Smith. Now we see a 10 ton Wallace and Stevens roller owned by Dave Pierce of Lincoln. This particular engine was caught on camera travelling by road. Restored by Mr Terry Rushby of Castleford, it was originally owned by Crayford Urban District Council. The loco it stood with is an Aveling and Porter three-speed road locomotive. This engine also travelled by road to the open weekend, but no footage was available. We see it backing up to take water next to the station. This next traction engine is a 3 inch scale, visiting from Melton Mowbray. He was an unexpected visitor that turned up on the Sunday. And here we see a four inch scale traction engine with long standing member John Bruce at the controls. And here is a father and son team, John Cook and his father Gordon, moving into position on their 4 inch scale foster traction engine outside the beer tent. And with the last fires dropped at the end of the day, the fun didn't end there.